Our next speaker is Dr. Jaita um, Sinha Ray. She did tell me I could use a married surname. <laughs> She is a PhD in chemical engineering, and she's a senior researcher in the CSR Center for Nanostructures and Advanced Materials. And the topic of her talk today is keeping oxygen out and freshness in, bag in a box. So um, I was told earlier this morning that at the exhibition, the box that she displays there actually contains some wine, and um, people are very welcome to go and have a look and maybe a taste to see how fresh that wine is. Thank you, Dr. Lara, for your kind introduction. Thanks a lot. And good afternoon, uh, colleagues and audience here. So I'm going to talk about some bag-in-box wine. So I believe most of you love wine and have tasted bag-in-box. So the next couple of minutes, I'm going to talk about our new active bag-in-box packaging film that can prolong the shelf life, prolong the freshness of the wine, particularly say red wine. Can't you hear me? Oh, okay. Okay, let me use this one. Sorry. Okay. So freshness as well as the shelf life of the wine is very important not only to producer of the wine, it is also important to consumer. And mostly the shelf life, target shelf life for retailer, for wine manufacturer, for bag in box wine is around nine months. And everybody aims to achieve this nine months or go further beyond. As you can see here, either you can move this bell curve towards a longer shelf life or you can reduce the variance. So that means we can have a shelf life of between five and seven months for sure. And it depends now on the couple of parameters like the color of the wine, the taste of the wine, that is the pH or the acidity present in the wine, as well as the sulfur dioxide present. Most important is the uh, it's a sensory test from the wine, professional wine tester, and a comparison between a bottled wine versus a bag-in-box wine. There are a couple of ways that can help us to prolong the shelf life of wine. One of them, it can be introduction of sulfur dioxide, which acts as an antioxidant, so it reduces the oxidation of wine, as well as it can be uh, some in improvement in fi uh, filtration process or sterility process of wine manufacturing. It can be uh, some improved barrier packaging, plastic, since it is a plastic packaging is used in bag in box, as you can see here, wine is packed inside a uh, plastic bag and then it is protected by a cardboard box. Please come to a stand also at exhibition stand, you will then visualize it how it is being packed. So, so barrier film also uh, part of the packaging that can prolong the shelf life of the wine and the minimization of oxygen pickup. And oxygen pickup is very critical as you have seen maybe in the shelf, in the shop, like bag in box wines are available in different package sizes, 5 liter, 3 liter, 2 liter. As you reduce the size of the bag in box, then this oxygen intake actually increases. And this is a summation of, say, for example, your dissolved oxygen as well as your uh, headspace oxygen. And if we cannot control this or if we cannot take some action that, that we can displace this oxygen and in uh, conjunction with also ingress of oxygen, from atmosphere inside the packaging material that spoils the wine. So that re reduces the wine quality, that changes the color of the wine and taste of the wine. So as uh, I mentioned also, sulfur dioxide is initially used in a form of sulfide when the wine is being produced from grapes. But it is supposed to reduce over time following this kind of trend. But in reality, the sulfur dioxide immediately reacts with the fruity acid is present in the wine or in the grape basically, and the, uh, the limit goes down. And that also eventually reduces to much lower concentration. 
if you consider a flexi tank where a tank is used to uh, transport the wine from one country to the other during transportation the sulfur dioxide also goes down and at the destination place where it is being now filled in a bag then sulfur dioxide needs to be added in extra and sulfur dioxide as you know is not good for health and many people are allergic to sulfur dioxide so in the globally there is a trend how to reduce the sulfur dioxide also in the wine barrier uh, packaging there are several packaging technologies available mostly they are available in the form of sachet or in a kind of label where you can have either in your oxygen scavenger present or you can have um, some barrier packaging using nanotechnology can be one of the route other thing can be um, carbon dioxide emitter that also improves the barrier property of the or at, at the end but these all these ap uh, applications or um, i will say the solutions are not really applicable for bag in box wine because it's a liquid material we cannot put a sachet inside a liquid or we cannot put a uh, uh, some sticker on the uh, on top of a liquid or something so then we started uh, to think of a different approach where we started of making an active film which film is acts as a liner or it can be just a film itself to contain the wine it will be in direct contact with wine and the wine then gets packed inside the bag and as soon as we it will be filled with wine it will start interacting with wine and as you have seen also in the last uh, slide the sulfur dioxide eventually goes over a time so our objective can't we develop some carbon dioxide instead because carbon dioxide also has antimicrobial property so if we can slowly release and compensate the loss of sulfur dioxide then it can, it can also prolong the shelf life it can ma maintain the color of the wine and that's why this project has been started but there is a question now comes now carbon dioxide there is a certain um, permeable limit for carbon dioxide acceptability say for example for red wine is 400 ppm it is a maximum cutoff for carbon dioxide for white wine it is slightly higher 600 ppm depending on if the wine is sparkling or steel or semi sparkling the limit of carbon dioxide also different so from our preliminary result and uh, using some of our uh, stoichiometric calculation we have estimated over 12 month period we can develop around 174 ppm pm of carbon dioxide which is still within the limit so it can be then the packaging can be applicable for both red and white wines but now we are coming to a film so in case of plastic film then we are not adding just the additive in the wine directly so we are putting the additive inside a film so that brings us to the next challenge that how much additive do i need to put in the film such that we can get release of carbon dioxide 174 ppm or slightly higher or less but at the same time we had to make sure that so this is the expected uh, layer thickness of the film so we cannot go very thick film we cannot go very thin film we have to also consider that what kind of plastic film thickness is suitable for bag in box application so what kind of so this is the expected layer thickness versus your filler concentration and what will give us 174 ppm as the same time we had had to also calculate it theoretically basically the like not all the particles or active particles will be exposed to wine to generate the carbon dioxide some will be inside the plastic covered so how, how much amount of uh, particles will be exposed to the wine to produce this amount of carbon dioxide so we estimated also this thing and uh, us patent has been published on this technology so we produce some active composite with our active fillers and then we produce the film the film was then used to make some bag and then it it was filled with wine and we had some testing and coming to that how the bag can be made so there are two options either bag can be made just using this plastic film or you can use a barrier film and a compos uh, that composite film as a liner you can just uh, seal at the edges so this is also the most common way um, to use in a bag in box packaging film 
but in it doesn't matter in which approach we uh, use the most important the bag will produce carbon dioxide and since carbon dioxide has higher solubility than oxygen in water so that it will displace the uh, intake oxygen that happens during filling that will displace to the head space and it will create a positive pressure that can also uh, prevent the oxygen ingress from the atmosphere over a period of time so basically then we can say that if we can minimize the oxidation of wine that means we can prolong the shelf life of the wine so this is our main objective so far we are addressing why we are doing the developing this technology and how we are achieving our goal but most important question is now coming like for whom we are developing it and how now we can make impact from here on and to address this thing then we have to actually understand the whole value chain in south africa you know wine winery wine industry is huge but across the value chain now we had to come up or, or understand that we have a certain technology we are producing a composite then who is going to compound it industrially so is a compounder is required who will then use this additive and the polymer and make the composite itself first of all now he is not get, making the bag who is the converter so converter it can be two of them it can be a um, company like Liquibox or Amco who usually produce or convert this composite to a film as well as to a bag but there are some entities also who produces either film or either bag and they can either get the film from which is imported from China or elsewhere and also filmmaker can use polymers which is imported at the same time now we are now having a film a bag but after bag we also need now winery and the brand owners to fill the bags with wine and test it and put to take it to the retailers for final um, uh, and so that it can go to the consumer like us it, it is also interesting to find not only in this value chain uh, we have this uh, converter and uh, wine producers or uh, brand owners there is another kind of entity and they are also quite informative like Bob Cox agency I'm mentioning it so they are neither producing film nor composite but they are the material supplier so they have all the channels also is a good linkage to them and we got also some information about bag in box selling in South Africa different sizes the over the last couple of years from 2014 to 2020 as if you can see here all the figures are quite small um, here but uh, you can see this uh, in a 5 liter and 3 liter bag sold in 2020 itself is just over 17 million and close to 12 million bags so this is not a small market this is quite big market then over the years we have interaction with different uh, companies across the value chain we understood our initial process we need to, we need to change they want a different grade of polymer that will be suitable for their application it's a industry specific so we have to change our polymer we had to change our uh, processing method processing conditions everything and that brings us to again the basic study um, of the materials flow behavior materials melting crystallization behavior uh, because all those things affect the final film production as well as the uh, stability of the film or the uh, or, or the bag in box itself so then we had to change it to our method to a master batch method using a different grade of polymers and stuff so we produce the master batch but initial trial at industry they could not blow up the film so it was a, an unsuccessful trial but we learned that the 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 moisture content is the main thing that created the problem and if if the moisture content i'm not saying a huge amount it's not even one percent the moisture content from 0.2.3 percent to below 0.1 percent that creates the problem and since we do not have that kind of uh, facility of bagging with inert atmosphere or that kind of thing that we had to monitor it every step 
from before you can see that in the we, we had to start up with what filler as received filler what is the moisture content then what is the moisture content after drying then what is the moisture content in the master batch then after we produced even the composite before that we had to take the material from csi to cape town so it's a, because of the time lag also like uh, then how the moisture content um, changes during storage all these things we had to monitor and then finally we uh, generated a spec sheet where we indicated that this is the moisture content it needs to be used this is the material we are sending to you and if you add a certain percentage of master batch so we have uh, also shared this information if you add your master batch at vary your different loading then what amount of carbon dioxide release you can expect we shared all this information to the industry partner and finally that we um, but we then produce the film uh, I hope yeah playing now at the industry so film has been produced at industrial scale it is acceptable quality was quite good they have produced um, afterwards uh, a bag it's also using a commercial bag production line so this is like a prototype of our bag in box so this is the bag has been produced at the industry so this is you can say like that we have achieved our first prototyping our, uh, technical validation at industry with the film technical validation with a bag production method from there on then we tested the film itself by ourselves because we are claiming that we are producing carbon dioxide whether it is really producing with this new film or not and then it's coming to this this is the when we fill the bag with wine and then there is no small bubbles as you can see over time it has been produced in the bag so these small bubbles over time it's uh, showing us that carbon dioxide is really getting produced in the bag in box as we are claiming in our patent and we have also developed a, a test method it's a laboratory scale test method for us to check that what is the, what amount of carbon dioxide comes up as well as we can see also compared to day zero to compared to day seven there is small bubbles are forming so that's also confirm as carbon dioxide production but what is the consequence of this thing is it a, is there any benefit of this carbon dioxide or not then we tested at the lab scale in our facility and you can see here this blue line is showing us is a wine red wine directly taken from commercial bag in box packaging how the redness of the red wine changes over a period and if we fill now the same wine in our active packaging bag you can see already the the redness of the wine it, it stays much stable and longer compared to the commercial one so this is our preliminary result from here on we sent our bags which has we have produced in um, industry for wine filling testing so this is our third step of technical validation whether now this bag sustain the automated wine filling line keeping uh, every all the processes exactly the same what industry is currently using and as you can see here already in this uh, video that bags can be filled with wine both white and red wine without any difficulties so this is our third step of prototype validation these wines and bags were then sent to wine uh, testing company and they have tested the wine though this test was for a short period it was for a 30 days while we are talking about a shelf life of nine months so the but this is quite good because this um, they have tested for both uh, white wine as well as the red wine as you can see control means is the commercial wine that is currently used the packaging and the active or the treatment is basically our new active composite bib film and in all the cases there are a couple of tests the, that industry uh, does um, or uh, regularly to check the wine quality so one of them is like a bubble volume then turbidity test oxidative browning test 
So there is no specific trend or of a different result was observed between control as well as the active film. So this is quite good that active film is not, um, uh, it is performing well as at least in the same level as the control film. As well as we got also a bit of sensory uh, composition testing, though it, a lot of work is required to come up with a uh, final conclusive result that uh, on the sensory testing by a professional wine tester. But uh, we got it like that the test uh, is remaining also the same in case of red wine particularly. And then um, the titratable acidity as well as the pH that gives you the um, acidity in the wine that the taste of the wine that is also remaining the same in control as well as um, our active BIB after 30 days. So this is this result is quite exciting. So this takes us to our way forward work. So longer shelf life testing as well as we need to understand a couple of wine chemistry, what we called oenology. So oenology is basically the study on wine. So we still need to understand um, that how Say, for example, the sulfur dioxide is being produced. We know that sulfur dioxide is being filled in the wine. So we are producing a, on top of a carbon dioxide to compensate the loss of sulfur dioxide. So how will separate the effect of both gases? What is contributing in which way? How sulfur dioxide, because sulfur dioxide, we know it is used as an antioxidant. And antioxidant, it can... Um, actually, as you can see here in the first reaction, reaction A, that uh, as an oxidative byproduct, the quinone is formed and sulfur dioxide binds or reacts with quinone to form again its phenolic uh, form. So this one, I, we know that sulfur dioxide can react in this way. Then we know also as a byproduct, uh, hydrogen peroxide is produced. So it also reacts with uh, by hydrogen peroxide and it again, um, uh, get lost that sulfur dioxide in a process of reacting this kind of um, um, stabilization reaction. It can also react with the oxygen that is getting ingressed from atmosphere. So for sulfur dioxide, couple of reaction we know, but what is the effect now when we are generating a, a carbon dioxide too? So this guy, chemistry, wine chemistry, we still need to understand a little bit more as well as the longer shelf life study is the main thing that is uh, we, we are going through now that will ascertain the acceptance of the wine um, packaging of uh, this uh, new active BIP film. So in my conclusion, we started with technology development, we started with invention disclosure patent, we progressed in higher tier level, then we uh, started a modification of our method, material from both sides, according to the industry need. We had a couple of technical uh, validation trial. Finally, we produced a bag um, that is an um, active bag, as well as we have tested um, at the industry. So this is the story so far we have. It looks very smooth, but please believe us, it's, it's not so smooth. There were a lot of ups and downs and we had also the scope in the project depending on what problem we are facing at that stage and how we can overcome that challenge. So step by step, we had to overcome a whole lot of challenges and we are really thankful to our funders, um, CSIR, yes, uh, DSI, as well as this is a TIA funded project. So we re we're really appreciating the association of all the funders and their guidance over the years and uh, living this journey together with us as well as i would like to thank um, my industry partners who assisted with all the technical validation so far and getting involved with the project and thanks to my colleagues too to end my presentation today i just want to mention this is the portion of the work it's, it's just only one portion of the work that we do but we also work on technology development and testing advanced and sustainable packaging addressing food security as well as striving towards plastic circular economy. So if you are interested to talk about any along this direction, you are most welcome to contact me as well as I'm also available and my colleagues are also available at the exhibition desk. So please visit us. Thank you.
Thanks, Jada. That was very interesting. I learned something about wine and a lot about the work that you guys do, and, and especially the, the value chain when it comes to where this product needs to go in and who all the players are and to get it into the box at the end of the day. I think that was really insightful. Are there any questions from the room? Our lady in pink. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, yes, uh, when I look at uh, the evaluation that you have conducted, uh, the control and uh, the packaging that you have developed, the treated packaging uh, for 30 days and, and so forth, you managed to maintain the same quality. But now what I've noticed, the pH increased a little bit, about 0.8%, which is not much of significant. Oh the 3.71 compared to a 3.68 yes that's what i'm saying it's not that much significant zero point it's about 0.8 percent a ph level of increase but now my question is this work was done within 30 days of which is a month and you've mentioned that a normal shelf life uh, you are targeting nine months and now you have also uh, commercialize the bag. Did you manage to monitor over that 90, that uh, uh, nine months and see if uh, the pH was stable at this level? Thank you for your question. And that's why I mentioned that is the next way forward work that we are busy doing it. Yes, so that we really need to do a shelf life testing uh, at winery with it at presence of we can say it's a professional wine tester so uh, all the tests needs to be done for a longer period to make sure even beyond nine months we have to target is there anybody that wants to be in the wine tasting group um uh, just to check have we tested it in the market how is it doing uh, in the market have we approached like that value chain that you were talking about, if you approach those people, what is the the what is it the the response the okay. response in the market, uh, especially uh, also from your side, doctor? I would like to actually know that uh, if you have tested it in the market. Yes. Yeah, so the, the these are the results that I'm sharing with you. Is this result particularly is a wine testing company? So this company, uh, first of all, I'll, I must mention that um, that the first the acceptance of the film. So film and bag, these are done or produced by a different entity, a different company. So it's industrial scale. So they are in the business. They are a multinational company based in South Africa also. So they have produced the film. They have produced the bag. So so far they are happy. The thing is now is a, it, when it comes to the wine tasting. So now bags are filled at winery. So winery is also a commercial production line. So they are happy with the filling process. So there is no issue. Coming to the tasting, then not all the wineries have their own individual R&D facility. So there is a common wine tasting company. A couple of wineries, they use that wine tasting facility. So that wine testing facility is conducting this test for us and gave us the result. So they are happy with this test, but as I have mentioned, we still need to understand the wine chemistry, how our active packaging is affecting on the, the wine. It's like we need also need to understand that um, how we will separate the effect of carbon dioxide from sulfur dioxide, how in presence of carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide is behaving or um, the real shelf life test for nine months and after nine months testing then is a sensory uh, test is uh, still being same or is better or is deteriorating um, with the active film so those information we still need to understand to before commercialization I think. Uh, there's a question at the back just a follow-up sorry the, the reason for my question is yes. to check whether it will be something that they will want to have uh, uh, on the shelf to actually prolong uh, the wine into nine months mm. or they will really want to keep it at nine months so that people will come back and buy more uh, rather than you know prolonging that life is it something positive for them 
Yes, I should mention, like as I mentioned, it's not only going beyond or shifting bell curve beyond nine months is important, is also the initial variance. So from three to five months, that variance, if it is also beneficial for that period, it also makes a huge difference for wine industry. And basically this in a project started with it, it, a conceptual discussion with one of the wine co company um, in Cape Town. And um, then uh, uh, the company undergo for different change in management and stuff. So we had lost a bit of contact and the person who started this project also retired. So that's why it's a bit of uh, ups and down is also there. I must uh, say that one. Yeah. Quick question on my side. Uh, Doc, on this yes. side. Yes. Yeah. Uh, what you've just presented right now, it's quite interesting. But I'm more on the sustainability and the environmental friendliness of these films. What are these plastics that you are considering to use in this BIB, if I may call it? Because as we know, BIB has limited recyclability. So how does that affect the recyclability of the BIB itself? Okay, it's a very good question. And I should mention like that this technology, this is a prototype demonstration. So proof of concept to prototyping. Here we cannot change suddenly everything different. So I cannot change the polymer what industry is currently using to a new polymer also. No? So we have to do that one step by step. So we had to, that's why I said that we had to change the material also depending on what industry is currently using, what they want at this moment. So based on what they want, we developed and showcasing the technology. But your point is really valid. So sustainable packaging, if we consider in future for biodegradable packaging or the compostable packaging, yes, this technology can also be used by changing a different kind of polymer matrix. So there is no problem if the industry moves in that direction. And we are already doing that kind of research. We, if you come to our exhibition, you will see already we have developed certain materials, not for bag in box that we are demonstrating, but for other food packaging application, we are demonstrating that we are also in the space of sustainable packaging. Thank you.